Inspector General of Police Kayode Ebetokun has refuted claims that he is lobbying the National Assembly to amend the Nigeria Police Act 2020 to extend his tenure and that of police personnel. Hi, welcome to What's Happening. These are the top 10 stories. At number one, the federal government has approved the exemption of small businesses, manufacturers and farmers from paying withholding tax to alleviate the tax burden on these sectors. This new regime announced by Taiwo Yedele, Chairman of the Presidential Committee on Fiscal Policy and Tax Reforms, was approved by President Balatinibu and will be officially gazetted soon. Oyedele highlighted that the old withholding tax system introduced in 1978 faced issues such as ambiguity and an excessive burden on businesses, especially those with low margins. Withholding tax, a method of collecting income tax in advance, has hard penalties for late filing that strained businesses further. The new regime aims to address these challenges, offering exemptions and reduced rates. At number two, the FCT Emergency Management Agency, FEMA, has confirmed that no lives were lost in a building collapse that occurred overnight in the Gariki area of Abuja. According to the agency's Acting Director General, Florence Wenegeme, the four-story building was an existing structure undergoing renovation. Channels Television reports that most of the construction workers had already left for the day when the building caved in. Emergency management officials blamed the contractor for ignoring directives from the Abuja Development Control Authority to halt work. Three persons were rescued from the scene with minor injuries and have since been treated and discharged from the hospital. At number three, the Speaker of the Imo State House of Assembly, Chike Olambe, announced Tuesday the suspension of four lawmakers for their alleged involvement in a plot to impeach him. The suspended lawmakers are Samuel Otuibe from Ahiaizu Mbise, Henry Abasono from Ezinihite Mbise, Chidebere Obunikba from Okigwe, and Dominic Ezerioha from Oru West. Speaker Olembe stated that a decision to suspend them was made during an executive session of the Assembly. Additionally, he disclosed that all standing committees previously chaired by the suspended members have been reassigned. At number four, Inspector General of Police Kayode Wetokun has refuted claims that he is lobbying the National Assembly to amend the Nigeria Police Act 2020 to extend his tenure in that of police personnel. First Public Relations Officer ACP Olumiwa Adejobi clarified in a statement that the proposed amendment, which seeks to increase the years of service for officers to 40 years and the age limit to 65 years, was initiated during the 8th Assembly but did not progress. Adejobi stated that legislative updates are routine to align laws with current realities. He condemns the spread of false information across media platforms, attributing the misrepresentation to baseless accusations against IGP Ewetoku for personal gain. At number five, the Nigerian Immigration Service, Ilela Border Command in Sokoto, has arrested 25-year-old Rukaya Hassan for attempting to traffic two underage girls across the border to the Niger Republic. Command Public Relations Officer Mohamed Abdullahi announced the arrest in a statement on Tuesday in Abuja, noting that the victims have been handed over to the National Agency for Prohibition of Trafficking in Persons, NAPTI, for further investigation. Hassan said a woman named Maman Adnan requested her to take the girls to another woman in Niger named Amina Yunusa, who would employ them in her restaurant in Nayame. The two teenagers, Nabila Ibrahim, age 17, and her sister, Zainab Ibrahim, aged 15, from Zuru local government area in KB State, corroborated they were going to Niger to work in a restaurant with their parents' approval. At number six, the transmission company of Nigeria, TCN, has suspended the planned two mills power outage on the Oshobo, Akure, and Adoikiti 132 KV lines. Benin Electricity Distribution Company, BDEDC's Head of Branding and Corporate Communications, Evelyn Wiwen, made this known in a statement on Tuesday in Benin, stating that the suspension is effective until further notice. 
The outage, initially scheduled for July 1st to August 31st, was announced by BEDC Electricity PLC. BEDC had on Sunday informed its customers in Ondo and Ekiti State about the scheduled maintenance work by TCN on the 132 kV Oshobo Akure transmission line. The maintenance involved installing optical ground wire and other activities requiring a power outage for safety. At number seven, Meta has announced that content creators in Abuja and Ghana with at least 5,000 followers will start earning money on Facebook from July 1st, 2024. The company introduced two monetization features, in-stream ads on Facebook and Facebook ads on Reels. These features will allow creators to earn revenue by producing original videos and building their communities, according to a statement from Meta. To use this product, creators must comply with Facebook's partnership and content monetization policies and be at least 18 years old. Moonbars, Global Partnerships Lead for Africa, the Middle East and Turkey at Meta, emphasized that this expansion will empower creators in Nigeria and Ghana to earn money while enhancing creativity globally. At number eight, the U.S. has proposed new regulations to protect workers from extreme heat as climate change intensifies heat waves across the nation. According to the government, about 35 million workers would be affected by the measures, which apply to those working in environments with a heat index of 80 degrees Fahrenheit or higher. A senior administration official stated that the purpose of the rule is to significantly reduce worker-related deaths injuries and illnesses caused by excessive heat exposure. According to AFP, workers must be provided with drinking water and access to shaded or air-conditioned break areas when the heat index hits 80 degrees. The new rule also mandates that if the heat index exceeds 90 degrees, employees will be entitled to a 15-minute break every two hours and managers must monitor workers for heat-related illness symptoms. At number nine, dozens of Kenyans took to the streets on Tuesday in renewed protest against President William Ruto. The demonstrations follow last month's anti-tax hike protests, which resulted in deadly violence. The Kenyan National Commission on Human Rights reported on Monday that 39 people were killed and 361 injured during two weeks of protests condemning the police use of excessive force. According to AFP, local politician John Quenya expressed frustration over businesses closing, despite no immediate threats, calling it economic sabotage. Larger crowds were seen marching in Mombasa, with smaller rallies in Kisumu, Nakuru and Nyeri. Despite Ruto's announcement that he would not sign the controversial finance bill into law, activists have continued their campaign against him. Finally, at number 10, French midfielder Paul Poba has denied rumors of his retirement, asserting his commitment to continue his football career. The former Manchester United star, who has faced recent challenges including injuries and a doping controversy, clarified his position in an interview with Sky Sports on Tuesday. Boba declared that he wants to fight for his career and he is optimistic. The statement comes as a direct response to speculation about his potential early retirement from professional football. That's it on what's happening. You can get the full story on our website at www.ritztv.ng. Follow us on social media and subscribe to our YouTube channel at Ritz TV Nigeria to join the conversation. Thank you for watching.